see. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Crystallized live stream. Uh, this week, uh, we'll go a bit on uh, and we'll start talking about content modeling. Um, and today with Mr. Board and uh, Mr. Didrik, we're going to be discussing and viewing an example uh, based on the new uh, content engine that uh, has been released in, over the past week. Uh, and we'll review actually some of the components that have been added in the content engine, uh, like and an example of how you can model uh, various things based on that. So, um, yeah, Mr. Board, Mr. Didrik, uh, please say hello. <laughs> oh, is it my hello, turn? Hello. Yeah, it's, it's, it's your turn. Hello, Internet. Hello, Internet. Um, Let's get started. It's, um, uh, what you said on the on the content modeling and and what Didrik is showing now is uh, is the we did a modeling of um, uh, uh, ingredients and chef and recipe uh, previously, uh, and now we'll take it a little bit further and basically we'll step one step back and and talk about so if you are building an online food store grocery store what is your content strategy. Uh, how would your customers find you? And uh, without going into a deep strategy, we think that um, probably marketing tomatoes and eggs and pepper in a beautiful recipe, that's a good strategy uh, for uh, generating um, content that people search for, how to make uh, spaghetti bolognese, for example. Uh, and in addition, uh, you have the other side of this, you have the uh, appliances makers. So if, so if you're making a stand mixer or you're making cookware, um, you probably would tackle your marketing in this exact same way. So you see, you kind of have two different uh, uh, industries uh, meeting together at the recipes, basically, which is traditionally the media space. You know, they, they market, uh, uh, create content for how to cook this edition, the other days. So uh, maybe Didrik, if you want to show uh, first uh, what your, uh, what we used to do with our previous uh, simple example and how we kind of extended this and used also some of the uh, modeling capabilities we have to combine rich marketing content with our products um, going forward. Exactly. Um... So uh, this is an extension of our a continuation of our last stream where we uh, modeled how to model spaghetti with boiled water. Uh, that was our last recipe. Of course, we have advanced over the time. So today we are going to create tagitelli. Oh, I'm gonna, somebody is going to tell me I pronounced that wrong, but at least it's spaghetti with tomato sauce. Um, <laughs> And for this, once again, we are using our crystallized content modeling kit, uh, which you can find uh, on our webpage and under our learning section, um, where we plan ahead before we start to implement anything. Uh, and this goes even before we start to create shapes inside of crystallize. Um, so this is our old one where we had a recipe. Uh, for each recipe, we had uh, ingredients uh, and we had a chef. And don't be scared, this is going to look like much, but <laughs> we have advanced a bit. And that's because we have extended the features inside of Crystallize as well, um, with uh, both the chunks, uh, the choice uh, component, the numeric component, and the fixed property table component uh, that you can see here. And that is pretty much what looks so advanced in here as well. Uh, but we'll go through each of the components and explain their properties and why we use it and how you can use it for other things than food recipes. Because like board said, food recipes are only just one out of many things that you can model. Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking what's the what's the thinking here? Because now you have a shape called chef, you have an ingredient, you have a recipe and you have an appliance. So how do you go about when you're kind of figuring out, uh, okay, I need an ingredient shape. Uh, why, why do you have that as a separate shape versus uh, having it just directly in the recipe? You know, you can type in the basil there or the onion. Uh, or, yeah. uh, it's because if you are creating an e-commerce store online, let's say that you are creating um, your recipe store or your grocery store online, 
but you want to sell uh, your products with rich content, uh, which means that for each ingredient, that can be a product inside of your e-commerce uh, that you can relate to a recipe. And the same goes for, okay, I need those recipes or those products to create this recipe, but you also need these appliances. So let's say that you also sell electric appliances, you sell uh, cookware, uh, pans and pots, uh, which means that you can also relate a recipe to that appliance. And by doing so, if you create rich content um, and explain well how to create, well, not boiled water spaghetti, but uh, proper spaghetti with tomato sauce, people might actually use your recipe and then your appliances and ingredients. And also, I see clearly that uh, I can I only have to add the basil as an ingredient once, and then I can reuse it across all of the uh, recipes. So you also have this reuse of content. So if it's a repeating piece of content, like the chef, uh, you would typically externalize it in a, in a shape so that you you don't duplicate content. Uh, I, I don't know if it's marketing content like a chef or meta information or if it is a product like ingredient or appliance. So we kind of extracted these two uh, different shapes so that in essence, as we will show, you just have to upload and market your black pepper once and your eggs once, and then you can reuse it in tons of recipes. Yeah. Uh, but if you zoom into maybe the ingredient shape, and let's take that first and, uh, and look at uh, what's the thinking behind the uh, the model here, and, and uh, maybe you can walk us through the different uh, components as we call it here, Friedrich. Yes, um, back to basics for each shape that you have a crystallized. So this is a shape inside a crystallized. You have a different set of components that you define yourself. Uh, crystallized ships out when you create your tenant with uh, a couple of basic uh, shapes, like one product, one folder, and one document. Uh, but this is something that you can extend to uh, what any, whatever shape that you would like it to be. So let's say that for this example, we are creating a product, which is an ingredient. Uh, we want to describe what this ingredient is. Like, okay, it's pepper. Uh, where, is it, where is it from? Maybe in the description. Uh, or what, uh, <laughs> what is a description of pepper, basically? Uh, you can the marketing copy you mar describe it. Yeah. yeah, marketing content. And of course, a product uh, shape in crystallized comes with uh, some uh, fixed properties when you decide it is a product shape, like uh, pricing, uh, image and variance. Uh, but we still also want um, pictures, uh, but also a fixed property tables. So this is not the same as a property table, because here you have uh, fixed keys, which means that for every time you create an ingredient, you have these set of keys that you need to fill in, in a table. Which is basically describing all of the gains you have from this particular ingredient uh, and can be used for search faceting or you can, uh, you know, compare different ingredients. For example, compare the two different types of, uh, I don't know, butter mm -hmm. and see which are the mm -hmm. most calories, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, but I actually I see that we have the picture in the model here, which, as you said, it is redundant. So I think we should remove that because it's part of the product shape, just to be... Exactly. Uh, I saw that as well. And uh, this is uh, also one of the reasonings behind content bundling first in Figma before we actually do any actual coding. Because uh, I heard the developer would say, okay, we have a picture. I guess I have to make that <laughs> uh, a part of the front-end boilerplate as well, or the front-end template. Um, but uh, when we go through it again, we see that this is actually redundant because this is a product which already has an image um, property. And I see you also have a switch there to s define if this is an organic uh, piece of grocery or not. Yeah, and a switch is uh, what it is. Uh, it was what it says. It's a Boolean. It's either yes or no. Or. But if you then go to the actual recipe shape, which is a lot more complex, I would say. It is. Uh, it is more complex, but uh, once again, let's just break it down from, uh, from top to bottom. Um, we have our shape, which is here, a document. This is the icon for a document. Um, but inside of the shapes, we just have a lot of different components. So same as the ingredient, we have a summary. It's uh, basically a description of what this recipe is. Here, we have added a picture, and that's because a document does not have uh, that as a fixed property. 
uh, when you define a document compared to a product. Uh, we have directions. So let's say this is a step-by-step -step guide on, okay, how do you move forward to start creating uh, spaghetti with tomato sauce? And but, we are actually going to create this from scratch up. So we're going to create uh, the spaghetti as well. So here I see that you are um, using a fixed properties table versus the summary is a rich text. Could you tell me what the difference between the two are and why would you choose the paragraph collection here to have the cooking directions? Exactly. Uh, you said the fixed property tables, but uh, not to mix with paragraph collections because uh, we have a rich text and a paragraph collection. Uh, and a paragraph collection is what it says it is. It's a paragraph. Uh, it's a collection of a single line, basically just a string, uh, and a rich text component like this, but also a picture and video. And this is repeatable, which means that this is a set of components that you can repeat over and over again. So it's perfect for creating like step one, step two, step three, and different images for uh, each of those paragraphs. And we'll show how this works in Sound Crystals afterwards, uh, because we are going to not only create the shapes, but we are going to fill in some content and uh, create our content inside of a tenant, inside of Crystals. Nice. Um, um, what do you have there as a prep time, uh, the 42 thing there? Oh, yes. So the new component, which is a number, and uh, we just used 42 as an icon. Mm -hmm. Those who know, they know. Uh, here you can also define how many decimals this number should have, but also what kind of units this number is. Okay. You can see that we have two um, number components defined here. One is only one unit, which is minutes. That means that every time you add something to prep time, this will render or come out again as minutes. And that's basically how long it takes to make the dish. That's what this uh, number is for. But then I see uh, <laughs> some cake there for the, for the ingredients. Uh, could you walk me through uh, kind of the thinking behind this? I will. Um, this cake is what we, what, what we are really proud of. And it's a really powerful tool inside of Crystallize. And this is a content chunk. And it, short story, uh, <laughs> a chunk is basically a set of components uh, grouped together. And what is special about a chunk as well is that this can be repeatable. So that's why each ingredient has, okay, you have an amount, the number component, and a relation. So let's say that, okay, we have tomatoes. That's something that we need for the tomato sauce. We can add the tomato as a relation to this ingredient chunk. Uh, and we can define how many tomato, tomatoes or how many kilos, because that's the amount. Cool. And inside of Crystallize, uh, you can then add another chunk, which are, let's say it's basil, mm -hmm. and some spices to make it better. Um, so we add the basil product to the relation in the chunk and how many basil grams or whatever unit is fitting for it. So a chunk is a repeatable set of components inside of Crystallize. So you are able to specify with semantic integrity so that you know the information or what you're, what you're referring to. So basically how much of each ingredient and you can have this down to liter or grams or pieces or tablespoons and it's repeatable up to how many ingredients you need, which also means in the receiving end of this, when you're building a front end, you could easily scale this up and down because this could be uh, made for four portion, uh, portions uh, by Sana, for example, and you could scale it up and down easily by using the amount and, and some clever maths. Yeah, so front end logic to basically how many persons times this number. Or this impact time. <laughs> so, so that's that's almost due towards the end there. And in addition, you also have appliances used. Uh, what's the thinking behind this? This is uh, once again, it's a relation, and uh, like we said, it's uh, for uh, relating to 
make sure that, okay, you need these appliances to create this recipe. Uh, so we have another shape called uh, appliance. This is a product, which once again, will add the, the properties of pricing and images. And you can see, once again, we have a description uh, describing the product, uh, the product story, which is a paragraph collection because it might be a lengthy story. Uh, it, then you have a fixed property table again uh, with the dimension. But here we also do have uh, one of our new structural components, which we call a choice. And a choice is basically what it says it is. You need to make a choice. So here you need to make a choice between the electric property table or the cookware property table. So when we create this, uh, this uh, item inside of Crystallize, you will be uh, prompted to make a choice to either fill out the electric property table, which has the properties, features, or the tables, voltage and power. Or if you choose the cookware, you only have the feature where oven safe is, it's safe to up to 300 degrees. Uh, it's dishwasher safe, it's non-sticky, but these keys does not apply to electric. Uh, uh, an electric item type. Well, it's useful. So it's basically a, a component, a polymorphic yes. component, because it can change the, the structure based on the choice of the editor. So while you still keep the, the single product shape for all mm -hmm. of the other components, you have one or more components then that can change their uh, data store, basically, based on the selection of the editorial user. That's uh, that's mighty useful. It's, it is mighty useful. It's a good component. <laughs> but, uh, and it doesn't have to be only two tables. It can be as many tables as you need. And this is just so we don't have to create a new shape for each type of product that you are going to sell. So I don't need them. OK, this is an electric appliance product. This is a cookware alliance product, which cool. all have the same components in the top. It has the brief, the product story, and the dimension. Yeah. So it's a way of cleaning up everything that you do. And it's also a better way to plan ahead, basically. And of course, this applies also to, let's say you're having an electronic store and you're selling TVs and you're selling uh, refrigerators in the same store. Of course, the TV has specific properties about, you know, uh, LCD or OLED technology and, you know, the uh, inches of the screen and all of these properties, which doesn't really apply to, uh, you know, a refrigerator. But uh, well, in 2021, people actually do have a screen on the refrigerator. <laughs> But uh, I think we, we, we get the point. <laughs> is another example. <laughs> but it's, it's to keep the semantics and keep it clean. And, and uh, in Crystal, it's, it's all about, we want to know the information about what we are storing so that you have the semantics and can use this for front-end logic or you can use it for comparison, uh, comparison between products or uh, faceted search or uh, just fancy navigation. Uh, mm -hmm. So it opens up more possibilities of reuse and also applying logic like uh, with the ingredients there. Since you know how many tomatoes you need to make the recipe, you can scale it up and down very easily by applying logic to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, exactly. but you have a last shape here also, Chef, which is a simpler shape. Of course, uh, it's a simpler shape, uh, but it's still very powerful. Uh, and this is, it goes to the same for if you have articles on the website, this could be the author of the website. And it's uh, instead of adding, okay, three different fields uh, and an image for everything that is the chef. Like this is his phone number, this is uh, his uh, home address, blah, blah, blah. You can add uh, a chef with a relation again. And you can see that we do use a lot of shapes or I mean, uh, a lot of relations. And that because what board said, reusability. We don't want to have a lot of duplicate information inside of uh, our uh, structured, structured data here. So a chef is a simple, sorry? So ideally you want no repeating data. You want to have exactly. it normal, so it is perfect for reuse. And you increase the content quality uh, so that uh, if you change the photo of your chef, it will be updated on all recipes okay. and so on. Let's say you have a chef that has been there for thousands of recipes and you don't have a relation component. You just fill it in every time you create a new document. You need to go into a thousand recipes to change the image of him just because you blinked during <laughs> the picture or whatever. Uh, here well, you can just well, change the chat. And you want to have a more current picture. 
that, that's also that <laughs> might be a better example. <laughs> but okay, uh, Didik, um, I, I understand the model. So how could you then implement this if you switch to crystallize and, and look at okay? I know you. Oh, I'm, gl it, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Uh, let me just, uh, I need to relocate my screen here a bit, just so I keep my model here. Um, so yeah, write some code also. Let's go here. <laughs> but maybe, um, could you also uh, change the resolution of your screen maybe, or uh, because it's a little, a little bit high? Like this? Is this better? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to show the relation between um, the shapes I am going to create uh, inside yeah. of Crystalize. So, if you go into your tenant, you will be uh, welcomed with this screen. Hopefully, it looks a bit better on a bigger screen. Um, but uh, what you do then is here, you got something called shapes, and this we call it shapes, and it has the icons of different shapes because it comes in all shapes and sizes. So, you click here, you see that as a default, we now have a folder page, a uh, folder shape, sorry. Um, and we want to create the ingredient like we talked about. So what I do then is, okay, here you can also read the different properties. Like I talked about that you have a product has images, prices, uh, and a document and has the properties of being a document. It has, it's basically an empty shape with, uh, that you fill in with content. And then you have the folder. And uh, the properties of a folder is that you can add stuff. You can add children to a folder. Yeah. So we'll create the product then. I will create the product. I just want an introduction again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a product. Okay, like we said, here we have a product called Ingredient. I'm gonna give it a bit more space just because I think I zoomed a bit too much. Okay. Um, for the ingredient, we want, like we see here, we want a rich text, like so. We give it the name description. You can also describe your component, so someone that comes after you know what this component does. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that now. Uh, let's add the property table here. You can see that, yes, I've been talking a lot about fixed property tables, but it's not a component on the right side here. Uh, and that's because it is a property table, but it has a type selection drop down here. Where we say, okay, this is a fixed property table instead. So um, to create the tables that we see here, um, you can see here you can add tables. So it could be table one, but you can also add a table two as a bad example. But you can add as many tables as you want. Uh, for now, we are only going to focus on this one table that is nutrition facts. Um, so let's see, nutrition facts for a key here, calories, fat. Forgive my typos if there are any to do it as fast as possible. It's good that it was easy things to type down. Okay, hard with it. <laughs> Protein, like so. So here we have a fixed table with uh, one section, one set of uh, one table section called nutrition facts with our fixed keys. And these keys can't be edited when I create an ingredient shape inside of crystallize later on. This I have to edit here. Um, could you also just capitalize uh, all of the keys? Just uh, <laughs> uh, hard to I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, sorry. Is <laughs> 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 organic? Basic boolean, yes or no? Is it organic? So here you can see, this is all I had to do to create this ingredient product shape. Oh. And I will add this uh, later on to the catalog. So we will fill out the information uh, and explain everything that it, there as well. Great. So basically here, instead of having a, a standardized way of describing a product, you are defining what fits your business. That's basically what you're doing. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm doing. Because there is a lot of people who you can get, okay, this is a product, but a product is 
a lot more than or it comes to many different shapes and sizes like we always say uh, it doesn't mean that even though you can define a product it's not your type of product so here you're actually fitting the technology to your business instead of the opposite uh, let's let's, uh, let's go for all the things that are on the left and right because we know that the recipe is something that we will create at the end so we'll create the chef uh, shape as well let's see uh, so we go up here I'll create a chef this is a chef shape it has a bio and you can see that we don't define a title or a single one here, which is the name. That's because we use, uh, oh, that's for later. That's when we're going in the catalog. Never mind, let's just keep on going. Here, bio. Picture. And a blog URL. I'll come back to what I started on. Here, now we have the chef shape. Um, let's go for an appliance, which is, it looks more complex, but we'll break it down. We'll do it here. Here you can see, okay, now we need a product again because we might want to sell this appliance. Appliance like this. Uh, let's go for a brief. Oh, switch to the I and the E, please. Oh, now, now we've done it. Like so. <laughs> perfect, perfect, man. Okay. Product story. Uh, do you want to capitalize story or? Uh, no. Okay. Just to be sure. <laughs> Once again, property table. We're going to switch it to fixed. We're going to call it dimensions. Once again, dimensions because it's section name, weight, length, depth, height. So Thanks just so. popping here, um, like what I, what I understand and what I, I really like is that essentially when you create an appliance, what you <coughs> observe um, is that basically every kind of appliance, any kind of appliance that I'm selling in my shop has a standardized fields but I want to define and select like for each type of appliances that I'm selling, their specified features, right? So, and it's, it's really nice that I see that we have, of course, the property table with dimensions and this, shares, this is shared among the two types of uh, products that I'm selling, which essentially is two types of products, but it's combined in one, uh, in one idea, which is appliance, right? Exactly. So it's, yeah. Uh, yes, and uh, the reason why, and now we come over to the choice structural component that, that we talked about, because these three components are something that are going to be shared among all our uh, appliance products, but we also do want some specific ones for electrics and some specific, specific ones for cookware. We can add even further, even more, if we, let's say, we get the uh, um, not cookware, oh, on the fly. Do I have anything else? Yes. <laughs> cutlery, cutlery, is that what yeah. you call it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> that could be a different uh, um, properties table inside of the choice. And, and basically what you're doing here is you're adding the description of the unique product. So an electric product has different properties versus a cookware, but you're not just adding uh, multiple fields because you don't want voltage fields to be available when you're adding a pot or a pan. So you keep a very semantic structure and an alternative to this would be to split up to create a shape called electric product and cooker product, but then you end up in uh, having a lot of shapes in the end and mm -hmm. where the only difference is the actual properties of mm -hmm. these products. So this is how you can combine them into one shape and by showing now your magic choice component. Yeah, and yes. I would imagine that this is like a really nice and smooth for someone from the editorial side of things, mm. where instead of being chaotic in chaotic, you know, means that he doesn't, uh, mm. maybe it's not that uh, clean for him to, to have several shapes to, to create products. He now has, you know, an appliance product. 
he knows where to, to place it, where to create it. Uh, just chooses when the time comes, the proper type of product that he's creating. Exactly, so. and it keeps the integrity of each, um, each input field as well, because uh, people are often tempted to, okay, I just need this information somewhere. Yeah. Um, and I see that this field is empty, so I'll put it in here. And then you have, then the properties of a fixed table is gone because uh, you'll get something that is non-viable uh, data inside of your fixed property. So it keeps it easier for the content creators as well. Uh, it gives you a set of fields that you need to fill in to create an electric uh, product or a cookware product, for example. Okay. Sure, Show us, I'll, show us how to do it. I'll show you, okay. So here we create a choice component. You see that we need to name the choice component as well. Here we got some names, that's good. <laughs> we'll call it type. Um, and like you've seen, I drag and drop uh, all the components inside my shape. But here I will do the same, but only on side of the property or so the choice structural component. So you see that everything changes color and this is just a visual way for us to uh, represent the shape inside of crystallize to make everything clearer. Uh, so I created my choice called a type. Um, we'll add the features. Drop the table. Call it electric maybe. So create an electric yeah. type and, uh, and add another property table for cookware. I think you're right. I do think you're right. So. We'll do this, and down here, we'll call it features. Sounds good, uh, sounds good. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> it looks more like the stuff I have on the right side. <laughs> Voltage, power. And there Thank we you. Go. <laughs> uh, and here we come back to, okay, this is one section of the electric table, but we can add another. Controls and pro programs. And this is typical electrical stuff. Is it, what type of controls do you have? Do you have, the controls are either touch, it's a mechanic, it's a lever, uh, something like this. Levels, like so. Levels is basically speed. How many trains does it have? Um, so here you can see, then you can add multiple. You can more add more sections or more, uh, sections to your property tables that fits your products. But and this is also the, as opposed to kind of adding this in a, in a bullet list in a, in a rich text field uh, where it would just be a blob here, you semantically know exactly what's the voltage, what's the power and so on. So you know more about your product information basically. Exactly. And it's easier for you as a developer to pursue what kind of content that you get. Um, for the property table, for the property table, as a, uh, once again, we'll add a property table. This we will call cookware. This is also a fixed property table. We'll add features to this one as well. Oven safe, dish washer safe, and non sticky, non stick. Stuff don't stick to this pan or Casserole. All right. So I think that's it for our appliance shape. Perfect. Looks good. Then the last one is the last. actual recipe, I guess. It is. So we go to the middle one. Here we got the recipe. We'll go through um, all of the different components the same way as we had on the other ones here. Let's see. Document. This is a recipe. Okay, it'll add the summary. This is a rich text. It has the properties of styling text, basically. You can add bold, italic, uh, bullet lists, links, stuff like that. Well, still being uh, semantically structured. So you can get it out as a JSON in, in the other end, basically. Exactly, exactly. Picture, picture of uh, the recipe, how the end result is. Probably something that will want you to make it. We'll add the paragraph collection with the directions. We'll show on the other end how this is going to look when we create the recipe. 
uh, let's add an instructions video. Instructions. Now we come to the number component, the numeric. Here we go. Um, and as you can see, it looks kind of familiar. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to just follow. Uh, let's call it uh, the content modeling, our recipe for the content modeling. Uh, so we'll add prep time. Zero decimals because we know we don't want to have seconds. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that specific when it comes to the minutes here. We'll add one unit, which are minutes. Uh, as we did with the choice, now we are going to add the, ch the chunks, which is a big and important part of our uh, recipes because this will hold all our ingredients. So let's see. In Ingredients like so. We'll add a numeric amount. I said two decimals because here we can have half a liter, for example. Um, let's add the units once again. Deciliter grams. Almost. Like so, uh, then we'll add our relation. And this is, of course, an important part of this chunk. Ingredient, uh, because this is how we're going to do it. We're going to drag an ingredient into the relation and specify, OK, what amount of this ingredient uh, do we need? And. Um, Maybe while while you're finishing off this, maybe Stavros, you can go ahead and uh, try to create some ingredients, and uh, yeah, I can do that. So we save some time on the content creation. <laughs> sure. Yeah, because this is going to be a lengthy stream, <laughs> which is good. I hope you guys buckle up because we still got some more stuff to show. Get popcorns. Get popcorns, yeah. <laughs> and you also see that we added the decimals, uh, like I said, and that's because we can have half a liter, for example. Uh, what is important and what I will visualize even further when I get back to the PIM is that you need to click this to make it repeatable. I will make this as a switch so it's better and uh, more visible. But now we can repeat this content chunk. Uh, we'll also add our uh, item relation once again, because that is our relation to um, the appliances. And of course, Least but not least, the creator, the chef of this recipe. Chef. There, I don't think we forgot anything there. I'm just creating the chef in the back end so that it's, uh, it will be there. Perfect. So now that you see it, we have created all our first shapes and everything is, we have actually modeled um, a really good model for creating an online food store. Uh, and also selling our online food uh, through either recipes, or you can have a list of ingredients. You can sell all your ingredients as a separate entity, but also your appliances. So it gives you it's, it gives you the power to decide how you want to sell your content, basically, or your products. I'll also just uh, create a couple of appliances, so uh, they will be there. Okay, so do you want me to start on creating the recipe already, or? <laughs> so uh, I guess you can start with the ingredient. Uh, show one ingredient uh, that Stavros hasn't already created. I will do that. So you can see here, here we have our catalog and inside of our catalog, we have folders. And like I said earlier, a folder has the advantages of having actually children. You can put stuff into folders. Uh, groceries. Here you can see that uh, the guys are hard, hard at it, trying to add the ingredients. So they already added tomato and salt. Well, they do that. I'll just find something else. Uh, ingredients. I guess I'll add, let's add the eggs. And to create an egg, we need to go into here. We need to click create product and ingredient. Here you can also see that we have our appliance. But since we know egg is not an appliance, that's an ingredient, we go so. 
And here we are um, presented with all the opportunities of or opportunities, all the <laughs> properties of a product. Like I said, here we have an image, we have tax groups, we have SKUs uh, and prices. We're going to keep it easy here. And uh, so we'll add our egg picture, like so. Super important is to always keep. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I lost my trailer. Um, to keep your content pure, I mean, to keep it clean. So, what's the price of an egg these days? Anybody know? At least in euros? <laughs> one. One. One euro. Uh, and here you can see what we have actually Cheap created. Eggs. That's good. What? Cheap eggs? One euro per egg? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Depends on how much the variance will be, right? <laughs> true enough, true enough. The amount oh, but let's keep it simple. Um, so what I want to show today is uh, what we have actually created, which is the shape. And here you can see all of the components that we created. Here we got the description. Um, this egg was created using only the finest uh, pins. What? Seeds? <laughs> oh, chicken. Isn't it chicken that makes eggs? True. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and as I said, on a witch text, you have the properties of, okay, I want this bold. I want this to be italic. Uh, I want to un underline only. And maybe just add a list. Ah, almost. No. Chickens. We can link to Wikipedia. Chickens. Hopefully, that's there. So that's the properties of a rich text. You get a paragraph where you can add as much content as you want, and you can style it. Here, you can see the fixed property tables in action. Uh, you had a set of keys already that you can't change. Um, if you use an arbitrary properties table instead, this will be empty and you can fill in whatever you want. But, okay, I don't know how much calories it is, but we'll go for something like this. One gram, 10 gram, two gram, one gram. I skip carbohydrates because I don't remember the value. It's one gram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is the properties table, the fixed property tables. And here we have the switch. Is it organic? I do think it is. Here we go. Okay, maybe I'll add, add some stock as well. Here. So now we have our egg product. So uh, well, on the back end, we have created some appliances. Chef and um, groceries are already in your database. Mm -hmm. now. Look at this. Okay. Then I guess we'll, we'll go here again. Let's see. Um, you can start on the recipe. I, yes, you, we can start on the recipe. Thank you have all the ingredients you need. Oh, finally. Okay, let's create what we agree upon. It was spaghetti tagatelli with, um, with uh, tomato sauce. So we go in here, we select the recipe shape. We call it Tele with tomato. Oh. Embassy. Embassy. Almost. Tagliatelle with an L before the T. Oh, yeah. oh, it's really close. Like this? Uh, not yeah. really. Tagli 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 Before the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Tagli there we go. There we go. Okay. Sorry to do all the Italians. Okay. And here you can see, here we are presented with our document shape, which is a recipe. So I'm pretty happy now that we did not uh, create any content for this before I start here live. Uh, but we'll show the concepts here. Uh, that's some demo data. That's fine. Yeah, I will. I will, I will not go for lorem ipsum. I'll say this is uh, a summary. Sorry. I know. This is bad. Uh, for the picture, did we have a proper picture of the food? We forgot that as well. We'll add. You have, if we go one folder up, you have the spaghetti mm -hmm. from last time. Yeah. 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 Spaghetti. <laughs> without tomato sauce this time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I added an image. And also, very important, always remember to add your alt text. 
Wall, wall of spam. Get it. White ball. Like so. And alt text is something describing the image for people who use screen readers, for example. Uh, directions. Here we go. Uh, this is what I talked about. This is the paragraph collection. Here we could have, OK, let's say that the first step is to create pasta. First step, yeah. let's just keep on. Create pasta. Um, blend your yeah. ingredients. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Managed it. Uh, for should, instructions. Oh, I will definitely commissionize it. So we managed to do everything except <laughs> actually adding <laughs> text. <laughs> but we found a lot of images. And here you can see uh, I uploaded a lot of the images on how uh, you actually create pasta. Then, so two ways of doing this. You could either explain the whole process in a separate document on how to create pasta or a separate recipe. But this is just a part of how to create it because what you do to need to do next is, of course, boil the water, like always. And number three, put in your pasta. And you can go on forever, explaining the whole process of creating uh, tagliatelle with tomato and basil. And for all of these steps, you can add uh, beautiful content, uh, lots of images, lots of videos, and uh, describe it exactly like you want. Yeah, we can even add some water <laughs> to the boiling of the water. Um, next up is the instructions video. We forgot to find an instructions video, but here you can upload a video. <laughs> Um, you don't have to uh, for all recipes. You can, yeah. uh, it's not so. And you can you also have multiple to. videos there. Definitely, you can. Uh, the next up is our, um, is our um, prep time prep component again. Uh, like I said, this is the prep time. It's minutes. You can see here, I'm not able to define decimals for the unit. We only have one unit that we defined, which is minutes. So it's going to take 42 minutes to prepare uh, this uh, tagliatelle with tomato and basil. And here comes the magic. Here you can see, okay, uh, it's something empty, but you can also see that we have a different set of styles here. Uh, and this is the chunks that we talked about. And it starts out with zero chunks. So I'll add a chunk here. I'll say, okay, and I need to find out, okay, what are we going to add first? Let's add the tomatoes. Yeah, well, the tomatoes and salt, keep it simple. <laughs> yep, we add the tomatoes here as a relation. We know that a tomato is not in in uh, liters. It can be, but let's the, add the pieces grand. instead. Yeah. By one grams of tomatoes. Five uh, pieces. Two tomatoes. Yeah. Two tomatoes with decimals. Yeah. <laughs> we know that we'll need uh, flour. How many grams of liters? Let's go grams. Yeah. 500 grams. 500 grams. It's going to be a great sauce with flour. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Oh, it's for the it's... pasta, Stavros. So you have to make the pasta. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Pepper, that's tablespoons, right? Yeah. One tablespoon of pepper. Teaspoon. Yep. Or teaspoon. I'm not great at making pasta. Yeah. Uh, let's add salt. And you can repeat. We don't need to create everybody or every product, but this is the basic concept that you repeat uh, the relation between your ingredients with an amount, which makes this for a semantic relation between the recipe and the ingredients that you actually do need to create your pasta. We'll add one teaspoon of salt. Here we go. <clears throat> Uh, so, okay, you got your ingredients. Uh, what's up next? What kind of appliances is used to create uh, pasta? At least from scratch. Appliances. Here we can see that uh, Border Service has already created pans, casserole, and pasta makers. And I think we're going to add everything. Okay. We have a smeg pasta creator here, electric, from the appliances. We can show that also as well, how the choice component works, yep. because that we didn't do. Uh, casserole and pan to create the tomato sauce. So this is the appliances that you need to use. USD, yeah, typo for me. <laughs> uh, the appliances used is what it's called. Uh, also, 
Last is who is the chef of this beautiful recipe. Here we go. And here so you can see- You uh, have defined a very, very semantically describing database model in just a few minutes here and populated it with content. So on the, it crystallizes headless. So just to show if you publish this, um, how would you get access to this data? Oh, that's under the GraphQL. And that you have here, here you see 13 milliseconds <laughs> to fetch all of the data for this uh, recipe with uh, Taglatella, with tomato and basil. Of course, the content exactly. doesn't really make sense, but uh, the structure of the content that don't make sense makes sense. Exactly. If that makes so sense. You can see, <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, you can see I have sinned because I did not describe the old text on the images, but uh, you can also see that you get variants of each image. Um, we can even see how comprehensive this is. <laughs> Popo just learned uh, or showed me the merge button. You take all the fragments and you just inject it. So here we have one long, beautiful GraphQL call, getting all the data uh, that is needed to create a semantically correct uh, recipe in your food store. And of course, yeah. this is for front-end developers that they can uh, fetch specifically the data they want here. <laughs> and no matter how much data they're fetching, um, you typically see that this will be returned pretty, pretty fast. But if you go yeah. back and look at the uh, uh, switch off the mode there mm -hmm. and look at the um, choice component. Uh, yeah, for appliance, the uh, yeah. maker. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. You can just click on the pasta maker there. Here we go. Uh, so, yeah, same as the content chunk that we just had, uh, we now have a choice structural component. And since this is already created, you can see that board or Staros created it using the electric choice here. But you can so, also reset it and show how it is from yes. start. Yeah, exactly. So. If we go here, we reset our choice. You can see that you are presented with uh, two different options, uh, electric or cookery. You choose electric. You get uh, the property tables that we talked about, the voltage and the power and the controls and programs. But you can also choose cookery instead. Yes, electric. Good, so, so basically what you built now, that it could really be uh, the basis of either a online store to sell appliances and cookware, like an uh, uh, electronic store that sells uh, also cookware, uh, but also an online grocery store. Um, or the third option would be like a media site that creates recipes and have ads for you know where you can buy these groceries, for example. So there's several different um, business models that could uh, be solved with this kind of content modeling. And you see that it's very specific because there's no shape or structure of your products and documents that is generic. It's just tailored to your uh, specific needs of mm. selling uh, ingredients and uh, appliances online. Exactly, exactly. So uh, what we have done, we, like Bors says, we have created a, an advanced model, uh, but it is reusable to a lot of different use cases. I think uh, that is it. Did we forget anything? I think that's good. Um, you went through, of course, uh, summarized, uh, we had a model that uh, executed the content strategy of uh, producing recipes to create awareness for your ingredients and mm -hmm. to inspire people to buy more eggs and tomatoes and to have a database over your pots and pans and pasta makers so you can sell that. Um, and have your actual ingredients also shoppable. Uh, so we should uh, actually do a stream where we look into how we can build a storefront for this also, but not right now, but uh, let's do a follow-up on that. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. We'll do a follow-up nice. on uh, how to get your and fetch your content from uh, a developer's perspective. Um, so it would to... be nice also there, like in the front end, you could have things like uh, of course, you have the time, total, ti total time expected to, to get this up and running, or you can have prepared, not up and running, I guess, or you can have like uh, expected uh, like costs or something like that, how much this would cost, which could be a combination of things that you, that you need, um, yes. ingredients and appliances and things like that. 
Exactly, because uh, each of these tomatoes, the flour, the black pepper, they have a price since yeah, it's uh, right? a product shape. And mm -hmm. for each that we need, um, we can uh, define a price and we yeah. can sum that together. And this is the price of the recipe, basically. Mm -hmm. And we can also then, you know, extend the model a little bit to specify which we miss here, as I see how many people or how many servings does this uh, make? Uh, so mm -hmm. kind of information about this is for four servings, do you want it for eight? And then we can double the ingredients and that sort of thing. So if you would uh, just before we close, show how we could uh, add that to the model. Let's add it. Uh, servings. Servings. Like so? Yeah. Persons. Here we go. Portions, I think. Yeah. Portions? Is that? Or servings or portions? Yeah, they're both. They're both. <laughs> it's getting late in the live stream now. <laughs> but anyhow, you can define uh, how many people this is for. No, no. Uh, so the serving is also correct, but uh, uh, the unit for servings is typically in portions yeah. because some people like two portions, some people like uh, one portion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know how to spell it, so I just gave up. <laughs> it's portions. So, uh, I'll, I'll, next time, I'll try to spell portions right. <laughs> but that's good. Uh, good, Rick, yeah, good job. Uh, but it's really quick. Um, and now we went through this in detail. But in essence, you can click this up in, uh, in a matter of uh, minutes, literally. Exactly. Yeah, so we promise to do that. Yeah. But it's a really strong tool to create your commerce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's really, really powerful, extendable, extensible, and reusable content, like you guys said in the beginning, right? Mm. So, yeah. Awesome. It was a uh, thank, yeah, thank you, Daniel. Um, uh, thank you guys for showing us the new components. Um, and for the guys in the community, if you have like any, uh, questions on or you know you're trying to solve your own um no, i'm not, not going to say pro uh, problems but uh you know you have your own ideas on how and what models you can be using with uh, the new the new content engine of crystallize uh let us know uh, it could be an interesting um you know um uh, thing to, to to show also for, for a live stream for you know like as a model ourselves to to, to just uh, see how it fits in the content engine. Um, so let us know. Feel free to reach out. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to say something, Mr. Board, or no. Uh, just uh, on what you said, that we're basically planning to do a series on where we take yes. different content strategies and building out the product information architecture, mm -hmm. basically. So building out shapes and defining uh, the structure for backend for an app or a web shop or yeah. what have. So we will do several of this, and the online food store was the first one out. Um, mm -hmm. And but there will be more. So as I said, any Maybe more to come. Any yeah. modeling pro uh, problems, as you said, uh, you have. <laughs> uh, let us know, and we'll see how we can solve it. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you again, Didrik, for the demonstration. It was great. Thank uh, you. And no thank problem. you everyone for joining. Um, we'll see you in the next one, and uh, have a great day.